Hey guys, Jacob here. You remember this circuit sculpture I built? Well today, I'm gonna send it to space and I'm gonna show you how I did it. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Near Space Launch and lead in uh, Near Space Education, uh, which is a new launch of a nonprofit that we're doing, uh, working in STEM. And so basically we help launch uh, satellites into orbit. We work with uh, people that have never gone to space before and help them get there for the first time. And also we work with space weather groups, uh, such as NASA and Space Force. We do high altitude balloon launches, do uh, small satellites. It has kept us all pretty busy, uh, including you, Jacob, there, and appreciate the help you bring to the team in making it happen. So uh, I brought you here to this virtual meeting today because I have have a request or a proposition. I was inspired by some other YouTubers that like to send their things into space once they've built it. So I thought, how cool would it be to send this little circuit sculpture whose literal purpose in life is to blink an LED forever? Forever. What if I could actually send it to space? So yeah, we're, we, you're right. National Space Day is coming up on uh, May 7th. Uh, we try to do something for that um, as an outreach program. Um, I'm trying to think through options here for you as uh, you've helped us with a lot of different projects here. Maybe you could partner with one of our current customers that we have launched for hire that is launching a new book and a new series and he needs a certain rig developed um, for it. Um, and maybe if you could help him with that, uh, we could include your uh, mini satellite there uh, to be on the rig with it. Um, is that a possibility, you think? Can you tell me what he's trying to do, what he might need this rig to accomplish? He wants to kind of uh, fly in the outer region there uh, to promote his book with some camera shots. Uh, so basically you want the curvature of the earth uh, on the um, top 1% along with his book cover. Um, and promoting that, uh, the coming out of his book. And then also, um, I think he has a moon rock or meteor uh, that he wants to be flown with it as well. So it would require some sort of circular rig that can extend away from the balloon to be able to take those images um, in high res at a certain angle. If you could help him, that'd be great. Um, and then you could uh, join yourself to that uh, hosted payload for this launch. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. I think we have uh, a week or two, so I'll reach out to him and uh, get that ball rolling quick. My name is Mark Rubin, and I'm launching a global eco project uh, soon in the next few months. It's called Project Honeylight, and I'm going to create that world by planting a billion trees between now and December 31st, 2045, and doing a lot of other environmental projects along the way. The tactic that I'm uh, deploying to launch is sending an image from the book. Uh, to the edge of space and the image in the book matches the right altitude to to be represented uh, by this image so basically it's sending an image into space that has the perspective of the altitude that matches the image where it's at and taking a picture of it what I'm going to do is use these the images provided uh, the video content and still pictures to create uh, an NFT, which is basically a piece of art on the blockchain. That's why this is important. I mean, it's not just, it's not like a, it's, it, it's not a, like a vanity project or like a, gee, it would be cool project. It's a way to launch a new idea, uh, an important idea about survival and energy. All right, I will send you that. Thanks again. Okay, bye. All right, bye-bye.
That did not go well. I'm gonna see if I can fix it. I'll be right back. We did it guys, it's back to its former glory. That didn't go as planned. <laughs> uh, we learned a couple lessons. First, don't be impatient. If the weather's no good, don't launch. As you saw in the video, it was really windy. Uh, the rain wasn't such a big deal, uh, but the wind pulled our payload straight into a tree. Um, which leads us to the second bit of advice. Uh, launch from a clear area. It was really cool that we had the community there and we didn't want to have to make them go uh, off-site. Uh, we wanted them right there at our building with us, but the tall trees were a, uh, an obstacle. <laughs> uh, so that's lesson number two. Lesson number three uh, is to keep the cameras and or the batteries inside some sort of a housing so they'll stay warm. All three of my cameras shut off before 50,000 feet. Uh, the launch actually made it all the way up to uh, 84,000 feet, but I didn't get any of the video at the peak altitude or the descent because the cameras were off at that point. So lesson number three, keep your electronics warm. Lesson number four, GoPro mounts are awesome, the little adhesive pads they come with, uh, but in those cold temperatures, uh, they come right off. I'm glad I tied safety lines to my rig because every one of the cameras was hanging down uh, below the camera platform when we got it back. Uh, so that was, that was fortunate. We're gonna take what we learned and we're gonna try this again. Uh, we're already ordering parts and redesigning the fixture. Uh, so stay tuned, there's gonna be a part two and we're gonna get this thing up into space and we're gonna have video to prove it, I promise. So stick with me. Uh, thanks for tagging along on the journey and uh, until next time.